I'm Eples Fox here to make tech easier and more fun. And today we are taking a look at the Elgato Stream Deck over on the desktop, where I'm going to show you how to set it up and set up your own custom key commands, your own shortcuts for most of the programs, and how to integrate your own icons so that they show up on the nice little screens behind the keys. This is a fairly easy to use software, but there are a couple little tricks that they haven't made super obvious yet. It's worth noting that I did get a pre-production sample so that the software that I use may be slightly updated by the time you get it. The overall look and feel and instructions are all going to be about the same, but they are keeping, they are continuously making updates to make it better. So that is worth noting. But we're going to flip on over to the desktop and I'm going to show you how to get up and running with the Elgato Stream Deck. And then in the next couple tutorials, I'll show you some advanced configuration with OBS, my production workflow, NVIDIA Shadow Play, and so on. And if you already missed it, or if you missed it and haven't seen it already, check the YouTube card icon above or link in the description for my review of the Elgato Stream Deck. All right, that's enough for me over here. Let's flip on over to the desktop and check it out. So this is what hopefully your final result will somewhat look like with, of course, different icons and things like that. This is my current active set of shortcuts and things like that. I'm, con I'm constantly working on mine, uh, but I've got folders at the top for my Adobe production apps. I just accidentally launched Photoshop, so there we go. And then this one over here is an OBS section for uh, all of my scene switching for my Twitch live streaming profile. They will not work at the moment since I'm using OBS Studio to record this tutorial. And then I do have a set of shortcuts assigned for actually using the Elgato Game Capture HD software because you can set up a couple neat things, and I'll show you some advanced tricks in the Game Capture specific tutorial. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to get up and running to get your basic shortcut set up. And then in the next videos, I will show you integrations into specific programs. So the first tip, since I need to do that to get started as on a blank slate to show you what I'm doing. If you open the settings cog, uh, you can actually export and import layouts for different shortcuts and things like that. This is useful for sharing with other people. Though keep in mind, the icons may not come with them. It's also useful for just backing up your settings every once in a while, just in case they... You know, they update the software and you lose settings or whatever, you can import them back in. So I'm going to call this March 2017 layout. And it will automatically save that. And then we can delete everything. And to delete icons out of here, just select them once and hit the delete key on your keyboard. And this works even for folders. Folders gone. So that helps clear out everything all at once this feels really painful because i spent so long setting this up but i did just back them up so we should be good to go now for certain features you will need integration into twitch.tv and into twitter and you can sign into those by clicking the settings cog and then where it says accounts you choose an account from the drop down menu you have tippy stream twitch and twitter currently they're working on you can see i'm still using the evaluation version in the final versions, they are working on YouTube gaming integration and things like that. So as the software updates, there may be more account integration, but simply select the one you want to use, click add account, and then you will be prompted to sign in. This does work This does work with two-step or two-factor authentication for all the profiles as well. And then this is where you would check for firmware updates and software updates and all that jazz. Oh, there's actually a reset button, so I didn't need to delete all the things, just so you're aware. Uh, also, this is a brightness slider for the actual buttons themselves. It, do it doesn't reflect anything in the software, but it does change the brightness of the backlight screens behind the keys. So when you first set it up, you're presented with this blank layout, and it may be a little daunting, but it doesn't need to be. So I am going to have dedicated videos on OBS, game capture, and then some more advanced stuff. So we're going to work with some basic functionality at the moment, and then I will dive into specifically how some of these other buttons work a little bit later in other tutorials. So first we're going to set up, if you want to do a custom hotkey of your own, for example, uh, Alt F or Alt 4 is a shortcut in my Photoshop. So you drag on whatever, you know, shortcut you want to use. So for this is trigger hotkey. Toggle hotkey is a little bit different. Uh, for most things, you're going to use trigger hotkey. Toggle hotkey basically keeps sending it until you toggle it back off. Uh, for most things, you want trigger hotkey, which is just going to send the key combination. Click where it says click here to assign hotkey and type in the key combination you want. Alt 1. That does something in my Photoshop layout. You can give it a title if you want, but it's worth noting that the title does show up over top the key and you only have so many characters to work with before it starts cutting off because the keys are only so big. These lines indicate where the text goes for the label, which is a little handy. Uh, so I'm going to call this F1 for now. 
and then you click where it has the little robot face or whatever indicator for that hotkey to choose a new icon. Now icons need to be a square resolution and roughly 144 by 144. That is the screen resolution behind each key. You can have bigger ones. Like I'm pretty sure all of these are bigger than 144 by 144. Uh, details. Yes, this one is 512 by 512. As long as it's, you know, the right aspect ratio, which is square. W width and length need to be the same. The dimensions need to be the same. Bam. Now it can be, as you saw there, it can be a JPEG, a PNG, a BMP, or an XPM. I believe that's like a GIMP file, but JPEG or PNG are basically what you should be working with. You cannot use GIFs. They did say it was a hardware limitation. There is no capability to use GIF animated formats, unfortunately. And currently, .ico files do not work. That is something they are working on integrating, but currently does not work. So I'm going to choose my levels button I created here from an icon, and that activates my levels. And since that already says levels on my image, I delete the title, so that way no text gets overlaid. And now when I press the button, it sends that hotkey. There are other options. For example, we have open website. So if I drag this on here, we can tell it to open reddit.com. So HTTP colon slash slash reddit.com. And then click an icon and I have a Reddit icon shortcut here. And now when I press the button on my keypad, opens up Chrome or your default browser and open up opens up the Reddit homepage. A launch is for a launching actual programs. Now this does not work with every program at the moment. Again, this is something they are tweaking. Um, but certain programs that need to access like INI files at the same time, for example, OBS Studio does not work for, for launching from this at the moment. But virtually everything else I've set up here does or that I've you know I've tested does OBS is just a very weird outlier so navigate to where your program is stored for example I'm going to tell it to open up uh, Premiere Pro CC 2017 uh, type in P no it's not under P it's Adobe Premiere Pro not Premiere Pro there it is tell it to open the exe and then find your shortcut unfortunately it does not pull the shortcut from the actual icon or from the exe itself or it doesn't pull the icon from that. That would be nice. It does not. But you can easily Google icon for X program. And there you go. And now if I tell it to open that, it's going to launch the program. Or in my case, just pull up the program because I already had it running. Multimedia buttons are fairly straightforward. Although it is nice, you do have an option of what you can do. And it automatically has some icons it can populate. Or you can choose your own as always. Uh, but you have stop, play, pause, next track, previous track, volume up, volume down, and mute. Which is... Quite handy and that just uses the default media key interface within windows so like if your keyboard had media keys it would send those same kinds of commands for twitch.tv integration you can have it automatically post a message to chat so uh brb guys is one that i use i usually type out a longer message than that if you have multiple twitch accounts you can actually choose between them that way you send it to the right chat in case you stream on multiple twitch channels for some reason you would want to set those up in separate folders um, but then I will just call that BRB, and every time I press BRB, it sends BRB guys to the Twitch chat. Show concurrent viewers isn't going to work because I'm not currently streaming, but if you tap on it, it loads and shows you the number of ongoing or you know of active concurrent viewers on your stream. If you're partnered on Twitch, you can toggle sub chat. It's not going to work for me because I'm not partnered, so I don't actually have sub chat. And then you can also toggle slow chat as well, which works for everyone. And the icon actually changes here when you press it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it changes the icon state to let you know whether or not you've already pressed it. Twitter, same thing. You can post a tweet, but it is worth noting that you can only post the same tweet once every 12 hours. So you can't, like if you spam the button, it's not going to send out that tweet more than basically once. Uh, but it is good as I use it to just tell people, hey, I've started streaming live and then the link to my stream I usually only stream, you know, start streaming once per day. So then I just tweet that out once I start streaming and everyone knows to go check it out. You can toggle tippy stream elements, uh, scenes, different, different scenes and sources to overlay into your OBS stream. If that's what you have set up and used, I don't actually use tippy stream at the moment. It's something that I'm working on getting to for tutorials and things like that. But you do have that integration as well. And then you have specific interactions for toggling recording, toggling screen, streaming, and things like that within the game capture HD software for your Elgato capture card specifically. Uh, there are a couple neat tricks you can do with their software, which I will show you in the next or in one of the next tutorials. 
I'll play this link in the description below. These should all be done by the time you watch this video, even if they're not publicly yet. They will be in the playlist in the description. And that is how you set up most of the shortcuts. Then to create a folder, you just drag one shortcut on top of the other and then drag it into place. And then when you go back up, it will just have a default folder icon. So then you can give it a title, GCHD, and then you can choose a different icon for it if you like. And they do have some icons provided here. So if I say I've got a game capture then they have, you know, I can choose that one. And that way I know it's for that specific program. And so in my original layout I showed you, I had different program or a folder for shortcuts for Premiere, for Photoshop, for Audition, for OBS, and for Elgato. And then you just tap the button to enter the folder and then tap the shortcut to start the process. Fairly straightforward, easy program to set up. And then once you're done using it, you just close it. It runs in the background. It is this icon right here, the little keyboard keypad icon. Double click it to open it back up and continue customizing if you like. And remember to export your layout whenever you want to back it up. And again, if you need to get rid of a shortcut or a folder or anything, just tap the delete key. It will say, hey, do you want to do this? You have some settings here and hit yes. And you're good to go. There are integrations currently, and again, they are constantly expanding this, but currently for Twitch actions, OBS actions, Tibby Stream actions, and game capture actions, I will be having separate videos for more details on the game capture, OBS, and some advanced stuff you can configure configure with it, but just wanted to run through the basic setup process. It is worth noting that for OBS and for game capture stuff, uh, the shortcuts aren't super customizable or functional until you have the program open. For example, real quick, and again, we'll dive deeper in another video, but if we have select scenes, it will only choose the scenes in my current scene collection on my recording view here because that's what is open. So if OBS isn't even open, then you can't change what scene. And if you try hitting the button, nothing will really happen, which is why if I hit, if I try to toggle the recording on the Game Capture HD software, nothing's happening because I don't have the program open at the moment. Just worth noting, it's caused a little bit of confusion for a couple people, but that is how you run, set up and run a basic setup for the Elgato Stream Deck. Thanks for watching this overall tutorial on how to set up the Elgato Stream Deck on your system. Again, I will have some more advanced tutorials on how to set it up with OBS, Shadowplay, and so on. Uh, keep an eye on the playlist link in the description below. And again, check out the review if you haven't already. Please subscribe for more awesome tech videos, and I will catch you in the next one.